Well, my name is Mike Keister. I'm 7th Ward Alderman. I'm also running for mayor of the city of Freeport. I was born and raised here in Freeport, graduated from Freeport High School in 1974, where I immediately went into the Air Force. I was there for five and a half years. I uh, came back to Freeport and shortly thereafter got on with Freeport Fire Department where I spent 24 years, retired as a lieutenant, and I was, uh, for what it's worth, I was uh, what they call out-of-class shift commander at the time for about 10 months where I ran, basically ran the shift with scheduling, um, you know, managing at the scenes, that kind of stuff. Uh, I was also uh, in the second group of paramedics here in Freeport, so I was also instrumental in helping uh, establish that program. Um, I've been on the city council now for, well, 1st of May will be six years. Um, I like to think that I've uh, made some difference. I try to put reason and common sense into the decisions. Uh, regardless of what my overall political affiliations are on na state and national elections, I like to look at all issues. And the, for me, the litmus test on what to vote positive for is what's right for Freeport, not whether it comes from Republican, Democrats, independents, whatever. If it's right for Freeport, then it should be moved forward. I've uh, been a member of ABATE, Freeport Chapter ABATE for uh, well, about 17 years now. Uh, we've been very active in the community and stuff. Uh, I was uh, what they call safety net coordinator. One of my jobs was to go around to the high school and teach motorcycle awareness to the uh, new drivers. Uh, so I basically to not be able to hit us. Uh, I'm not as active into that as I was, but I'm still, I still stay active in it. Overall, I think Freeport's strengths um, lie in some of our businesses. I mean, we have some unique ones like the dairy downtown, uh, which is unique for our community. A um, couple of other things we have that I think are not as used as well as uh, they should be or known as well as they should be is Park Hills Golf Course, which is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best golf courses in the area and could be utilized more. We have a wonderful bowling alley out here that we could be uh, possibly working on trying to bring tournaments and stuff in. And the one big asset we have that I think is greatly underused is our fairgrounds. We have a very beautiful fairgrounds out there with a lot of abilities and our buildings and a lot of capabilities and it's used what half a dozen times a year and uh, I think we need to uh, work on that. I think as far as uh, uh, resources of people for employment and stuff in town I think we have a lar large base of resources. We certainly have Highland Community College out here which is a good college. Other than that, you know, I mean, there's probably a number of other things I can mention, but I, I think we've got a great community with a lot of assets, and I think we need to work harder to try and market them and use them. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty big question, but uh, let me put it to you this way. One of the reasons I ran for office in the first place is, like I said, I was born and raised here in Freeport, and in my opinion, Freeport, has, their government has always been reactive instead of proactive. Instead of planning for the future, they wait for something to happen and take care of it. I've been trying to uh, change that mentality, and I'm happy to say that not necessarily because of me, it is changing downtown. Um, all you have to do is look at the streets, the sewer infrastructure, uh, the old city hall, and you can see that there wasn't a lot of that, a lot of planning for the future. It just when something happened, they took care of it, and that was it. They're looking at today, not five years down the road. And uh, I think that's something we definitely need to do. I think if it was done 20 years ago when it should have been, uh, Freeport wouldn't be in the position it's in right now. Financially, we're doing okay. Uh, there's not a lot of extra money to play with right now. Uh, we are starting to work on the budget now, and I think I'm gonna find it, we're going to find it very interesting to try and make all the ends meet. Safety in Freeport, I think we're doing very good. Uh, yes, here lately we've had a little rise in the crime rate. Uh, I think. Uh, Chief Barklow is doing a wonderful job. Him and I have had uh, several conversations in the uh, recent past on how to improve that. And I think one of the main things we need to focus on on that is citizen involvement. If you witness something, it, you need to step up and say something because that's the only way these people are going to get caught. Complacency is a criminal's biggest ally. And if we can start doing some of that, then I think we can we can get a better handle on, on what's going on in Freeport. Um, the economy right now is not the best, and uh, I think there are ways that we can work on that. Um, myself, my own opinion right now is I think what we need to do is define what Freeport is and where Freeport's going. We've got a lot of different programs right now working, but they're all kind of going in different little directions. 
but we don't know. We, I don't think anybody's really sat down and defined what the end game is. Where do we want to be in the end? If we can sit down and do that, whether we do it ourselves or there's companies out there like uh, Rochelle used a few years back to help define where the city can go and what's best fit for it, and everybody moving in the same direction, then I think we can really do something with this town and move it forward in a very rapid period of time. As far as morale in town, I don't think it's the best. Uh, I, I am, there's a lot of people that are very involved in the community and the morale is good there. There's other areas where it's not. Uh, I think if we can start building some pride in ownership in this community, a lot of these problems like the vacant houses, some of the, a lot of the nuisance calls that we get for bad lawns and that kind of stuff, will all take care of themselves. The city won't have to take care of them if we can just start building pride back into this community. Um, I drive motor coach and semi part time. I get into a lot of different towns. And just driving into the towns, you can tell which, which communities have pride and which ones don't just by driving in and looking. And I think we can do that here in Freeport and change things as well. The main challenge I see right now is uh, doing all the groundwork so that when uh, uh, we get to that point in the middle of May that we can uh, make the transition comfortably. There's going to be um, teething problems, if you will, uh, where something comes up that we haven't thought about, we haven't covered, and then we're going to have to work on it at that point. Uh, I personally am very optimistic about it. I think it's going to be a good thing for the community. But it, it's just trying to think of everything that, that needs to be covered, and we've been comparing, we being the city council, been comparing to other communities and stuff and pattering after some of their uh, ordinances and regulations and how this goes to try to make the transition as soon as, as smooth as possible but that's that's the main thing I see is making the transition because there there's going to be there's going to be little snags here and there I mean there's no doubt in my mind it's just a question of uh, trying to make sure that we can get through them as quickly and smoothly as possible That's a good question. Um, as I see it, the mayor is going to still be the leader of the community. Uh, his main job would be to plan and look towards the future, help try to bring business and industry into this community, help move the community forward, and also be a face or a spokesperson for the community. Uh, the city manager basically is going to be running most of the day-to-day -day operations, handling the department heads, different departments, uh, setting policy for them and stuff, where the mayor can concentrate on moving things into the future. Well, within city government, I think what we need right now, and I have proposed this and run into a little difficulty getting it moving, but I think we need to take each individual department of the city, tear it completely apart, look at all the ordinances and everything involved in it, how the, how the uh, procedures and policies are done for that department, and then put it back together in a more uh, common sense matter, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Um, some of these departments have not been reviewed in many years. And I'm, I'm not saying that the department heads are doing a, a bad job because they are doing a very good job. But there are, are different things uh, such as uh, the way the airport's being run, um, and some of the different policies and departments and stuff. And there are there is possibly areas where some consolidation can be made uh, to save money. So I think that's one of the more important things to do is to, to, to look at that and review that. And, and I certainly uh, feel that how the city employees and stuff are being handled and stuff needs to be reviewed and make sure that that's done in a proper manner. Because let's face it, and forgive me for putting it this way, but I don't know how else to put it. If you've got a bunch of employees and you treat them like morons, you got morons. If you treat them like professionals, you got professionals. And I just want to make sure that it's being done in a manner that we get the best out of the employees that we can get and still treat them properly. As far as the city, uh, as I said before, morale and pride in the city, I think is one of the big things that we need to work on right now. Unfortunately, you know, it sounds simple, but it's a very complex problem. Um, certainly bringing some jobs into this community will help with the morale. Uh, helping reduce even further the crime rate in town uh, would help. Uh, I think also working like on the street infrastructure and stuff and improving that um, would definitely make a big impact. Yes, I do. Um, like I said, I was born and raised in town. And 
when I was a teenager until I left, I mean, I could go out and roam the streets anytime I wanted to and not really worry about it. Yeah, there were, it was back in the 70s, so there were certain areas you just didn't go into. But in the most part, you know, as 13, 14, 15-year-old kid, I could roam the streets, no problem. We need to bring some of that back. Um, certainly, we need to get more jobs and more good-paying jobs into this community. Uh, but like I said, I think the big thing is defining what Freeport is, what it can become. I mean, can we be? Are, are we going to be a tourist town? Are we going to be a recreational town, uh, bedroom community, retirement community? What is the best fit for this and move forward? You know, I envision Freeport prospering, but until we define what we're going to be and where we're going to go, it's kind of hard to set a, 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 an overall firm vision as to what Freeport's going to look like 10, 15, 20 years down the road. All the streets in good repair, water sewer system, good repair and up to snuff. Um, enough jobs for everybody to be able to live comfortably and happy. Uh, and people, all the people in the community, not just a, a few of them, but all the community people in the community taking care of their properties, uh, taking care of the city. Uh, I live down here by the high school and uh, when school is in session, I'm constantly having to pick up trash and stuff out of my yard from people walking by and just throwing it in there. Uh, a lot of that stuff will go away. And one of the things when I was younger that, I, that you don't see today that I truly miss is when your neighbor needed help, you gave it to them. You didn't just stand there and watch them and try to figure out you know, what's going on, but you went over there and helped them. And I think we need to bring some of that back too. Uh, you, know, you live in a neighborhood, that's your neighbor. If they're, having, if they're having trouble where they can't take care of their yard, maybe you offer to do it for them. You know, give you a couple bucks for it, maybe, I don't know. But that could go a long way in bringing back the pride and attitude in this community. Well, a number of reasons uh, I can think of right now. First of all, my ability to look at the problem from both sides and to make a decision as to what is the best direction to go. I, yeah, I have a, a way I vote, specific party I vote for in a national election, but it's irrelevant here. When I'm sitting in that council chamber, that's all put beside. And my main objective is what's right for Freeport. I don't care if it's a Democratic idea, Republican idea, whatever. If it's right for Freeport, we should adopt it, we should move forward with it. And I have the ability to look at that and review that, I guess put some logic and common sense into it. Um, Another thing that I think is unique to me, especially uh, with our transition to the city manager, is as of the 1st of May, I will have spent 30 years uh, in service of the city, either in the fire department or on city council. So I've got a lot of history with the city and uh, uh, information that I can use to help with the transition to the city manager and make it as smooth as possible and answer some questions quickly and efficiently to help make decisions that Frankly, my opponents don't have. Uh, the only thing I want to address right now is I think Freeport's at a crossroads right now uh, where either we're going to get aggressive and proactive and start moving the city forward or either it's going to stagnate and die. I, I really believe that we're at that point. And being born and raised here, I don't want to see that happen. We've got a great community. Um, it's going to take a lot of work. And it's, not, it's going to take more than just the city government. The whole town is going to have to get involved uh, to make this happen. Um, I think I've got the qualities to help do that and work with the city manager and, and make it happen. Um, being a retired firefighter, I don't have anything else to do. I mean, yeah, I work part-time right now, but that could go away tomorrow and it wouldn't bother me a bit. So I would be able to dedicate as much time as necessary to make this happen. But what I think is more important than anything else is people to get out and vote on February 28th and look at the issues. Look at what, where the uh, candidate stands on the issues and what they're planning on doing. One of the things, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. When I first decided and announced that I was running for mayor, I was told, and I won't say by who, that, yeah, I can run, but I probably won't win because I don't have the money it takes to get into office. That the only way to get, an off get into office here in Freeport is to spend a lot of money. I don't believe that. Maybe there's some candidates out there doing it right now. I don't know for sure. 
But don't look at how many signs the person's got up. Don't look at how many advertisements they put in the paper because that's just money. You need to sit and evaluate the candidate themselves, where they stand, where they've been, and where they want us to go, and make your decision based on that, not by the number of yard signs and stuff they've been able to put out. And I think if they do that, I think the right decision will be made and Freeport can move forward. 